Hello, and welcome to Essential Alchemy. Alchemy is defined as the power or process that changes or transforms something in a mysterious or impressive way. My hope is that the information in this podcast can help you transform your mood, your energy, physical health, or even connect some dots to help you shift your mental or emotional state. I'm your host, Jody Cohen, a best-selling author, award-winning journalist, functional practitioner, lifelong learner, and founder of Vibrant Blue Oils, a company that sells proprietary blends of high-quality organic or wildcrafted essential oil remedies designed to help you return to your ideal mental, physical, and emotional state. You can find out more about me and my company at VibrantBlueOils.com. And with that, let's get started with today's episode. Hello, I am your host, Jody Cohn, and I'm really excited to welcome someone I've been friends with for quite some time, uh, Brian Hoyer, and he has been evolving in this evolving world of EMF. He's one of the uh, world's top EMF mitigation specialists and a fellow functional uh, nutritional therapy practitioner. He began his deep dive into health when he became a father. How many kids do you have now? I have four. What are their ages? Uh, Twelve. Uh, t- actually, she's 13 now. 13, 10, almost eight-year-old, and then a two-year-old. Amazing, amazing. And he wanted to provide the most optimal growing environment for his family. Uh, you founded Shield Leaf Healing in 2017 with the goal of helping um, modern humanity recreate electromagnetic environments that more closely mimic our historic human habitants. Ha- habitants. And... Um, You've been hand-selected and trained uh, an elite team of EMF professionals. You've actually come and done my uh, Seattle house, which we can talk about. And um, you uh, offer consultations to customize EMF shielding for homes and businesses from the ground up in new construction, remodel projects, hotels, and schools. Welcome, Brian. And you also have this amazing class to help people kind of figure out uh, a DIY class that we can talk about. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to help people where they're at because uh, a lot of people aren't ready to just have a professional come in and like scan the whole place and come up with a whole whole plan right away. They, you know, or we can't get to them because we do travel to all the contiguous United States. And then sometimes we'll get up to Hawaii and we're trying to plan a trip up to Alaska and we go to Mexico sometimes. But, um, you know, we've about usually we can we can get to any place in the contiguous united states because i've got about five people trained to go all over and we hit every place about once every other month or once every three months um, on the east coast and west coast and we have people kind of stationed all around the united states okay so tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into what you do now sure yeah so my background, as stated in my bio, is that I'm, I'm, I started off as a nu- functional nutritional therapy practitioner, and I had a practice in California where I was seeing about uh, 50 regular clients and doing uh, in-office testing with all the uh, neurolymphatic reflex points, and I, I learned uh, Dr. Klinghart's um, autonomic response testing, and so I was incorporating all of that into my practice and building these customized protocols for people to help balance their digestion and hormones and, and basically everything, just building these customized protocols. And, you know, with that certification, you, you tend to want to do uh, continuing education. And so, you know, when I did the clean heart training for the autonomic response testing, which is a type of muscle testing system, that's, I, I think it's probably the most accurate uh, way to muscle test. Um, we, uh, you know, he'd had this lecture on EMF and just made this statement about, you know, half of his practice has children with autism and the, you know, in his experience that the children will not get better unless they do these steps to take care of the EMF problem. And so uh, there's things like turning the Wi-Fi off at night and moving, you know, moving the bed away from geopathic stress zones or mitigating the geopathic stress zones. Mm-hmm. And fully shielding the entire bedroom and installing filters for the dirty electricity. There was all these 
these points that you have to hit and you have to do all of these things or else the the patient the patient doesn't get better it's, and so well, that's not every autistic patient just to clarify it's ones that happen to be in geopathic stress zones but yes yeah yeah it's every 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 one of his patients he noticed especially with the the children with autism uh, but yeah, there's people with chronic Lyme and mold and just, but, but only the ones that weren't getting better with just the basic, like when they weren't getting better, he looked at that. Right. Yeah. But he, but he would always have as a prerequisite that you have to take care of this first. Otherwise I won't work with you. I don't know if that's still his policy, but he had that in place for a while. Yeah, basically. I, I do think it, the point being that you have to look at the environment as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, you're doing all these things and the supplements aren't working, you know, and this is what I started to notice in my practice is that um, I would get people better, like spending like six or eight weeks on a gut healing protocol, optimizing their digestion. As soon as they get off the supplements, even though they're still eating the same way, things would start to come back. The stress would, would creep in and it, you know, it started to experiment with shielding the EMF and doing doing things that way. And I would notice that they wouldn't need the supplements anymore. And sometimes they could just heal without a lot of the supplements. And so, you know, if you want to jumpstart the healing, I would definitely use the supplements. There's some really powerful things you can use, including essential oils to help balance the organs and get everything moving in like a really quick way. But in order to maintain that, you you know addressing these these uh, environmental stressors can even boost the effectiveness of all of the things that you're doing with supplementation digestive enzymes uh, oils like whatever you're doing if you're if you have a better environment that's not bombarding you all the time while you're sleeping then all the therapies that you're doing tend to work better and so I was looking around for other professionals to recommend because I didn't know much about this. I'd only started to research kind of on my own and uh, nobody was doing those steps to make the perfect environment, which is what I wanted because as a nutritional therapy practitioner, I'm trying to get people back to an ancestral diet and more of an ancestral lifestyle. But, uh, you know, and everything that you're putting into your body needs to be natural, whole food, nutrient dense. but they weren't in an ancestral environment to heal in. So my my thought was, gosh, we're working so hard to get all this stuff into the body that's ancestral, like what humans have eaten for thousands or millions of years or whatever. But yet we don't have an ancestral environment. And so like we have all of these crazy stressors that are modern stressors that are just bombarding us and causing dysfunction in the body. And so how do we fix the, that to match the ancestral match a more ancestral environment and there just wasn't really anybody doing that so i decided to look around and search and i found a a clinic from austria a naturopathic and environmental medicine clinic that was doing a workshop in the united states and i went to their training got certified with them as a geobiologist and started you know kind of my my journey with that and implementing like these solutions and taking the taking it even to higher levels and more shielding uh, that better matches the, you know, our ancestral environment and including, you know, we added in light. I don't think I was testing much in uh, artificial lighting when I did your assessment in Seattle a few years ago, but uh, now we're actually testing lighting with these cool spectrometers that we have and uh, going around and trying to match the outdoor light with the indoor light and changing the lights in, inside the house to to better accommodate like healing indoors, because let's be honest, a lot of us spend a lot of time indoors, especially in the winter and the lighting environment is huge for, um, for, for combating things like seasonal affective disorder, vitamin D deficiency, and all sorts of things. Even a lot of mitochondrial dysfunction because of not being exposed to near infrared light nearly as much in the winter versus when you're outside a lot more in the summertime. I love that. So you identified a need that needed filling and you dove in to kind of figure out how the environment can either support your regulation or dysregulate you. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's essentially kind of the philosophy of it is let's, you know, with anything we do, 
let's think about this in terms of foundational ancestral tenants almost like what what is you know and that's really the baseline of what's what's healthy for human because that's how our bodies have uh, developed over thousands and thousands of years to be in an environment where this certain type of food is available and our bodies uh you know kind of you know uh, adjust to that and then also what kind of environment did we have? How were we walking on the ground? Was it barefoot? Were we getting connected to the earth? And there's so many modern things where we're disconnected from the earth with rubber soled shoes, building our houses up off the ground and uh, driving in cars instead of on a living being like a horse where they're connected to the ground. And so we're disconnecting ourselves from this beneficial energy from the earth and then introducing all these wireless frequencies and pulsating electric currents that are actually causing stimulation and a more uh, sympathetic response, a more fight or flight response in the body. And so like the, the idea is like, okay, how do we get back connected to the earth and, and, and uh, how we're supposed to be on this planet? And how do we block out a lot of the artificial uh, frequencies, whether it's uh, electricity from the walls, or, you know, and the harmonics that go along with that electricity and the wireless frequencies and the magnetic fields and the artificial pulsating light that we have, and also making sure that we have the, the right spectrum of light. And so the, the model is, okay, what does nature provide us and what have we messed up in the, in this, on this planet and how do we use technology and shielding techniques to recreate what were the environment that we are supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. And I think this really kind of made sense to me after um, thinking about, you know, one day we were at the zoo and my wife, she was a, she was a zookeeper and uh, we were looking at all these animals and, and there was these spider monkeys in uh, Lodi, California at this, this zoo that she was working at as a zookeeper. And uh, there was people that were feeding them hot dogs. And, and, and as a zookeeper, she would always have to be like, no, you guys, you can't, you can't feed them that that's not their natural diet. You yeah. Know? And, uh, and it kind of, kind of created this idea in my mind, like, man, what if we had a human exhibit, what would our <laughs> natural diet be? And like, what would we be looking like? And like, like, I think, well, right now, what it would look like is just a living room and everybody connected to their Wi-Fi and their cell phones, you know, just there with the blue light blasting. And that's completely different than what a zookeeper would want for our species. You know, if they were having humans in a, in a zoological yeah. exhibit, like historically for thousands and thousands of years, we would have been barefoot, grounded to the earth, sun on our skin, and we wouldn't have any of these frequencies around. And so that picture of a human exhibit in a zoo, like what is the natural environment? And zookeepers, they work so hard to provide like, a more natural environment, something like what, what they would have in nature, eating, eating the right diet, creating trees and, and limbs and habitats that they can, they can actually climb on that, that mimics the natural environment so that they can still be who they are of their, as in the essence of who they are as a species, you know, monkeys need to be monkeys. They need to climb. Unpack that. So let's first talk about kind of what throws us out of balance? Like you mentioned EMFs and electricity. Can you talk a little bit about what that does to us and how you, um, you know, un unpack that? Yeah. So if you think about, um, I, I like to split things up into natural frequencies versus unnatural ones. Wonderful. And basically the natural frequency of electricity is the DC energy that you get from the earth. And this is a one-way direction. It's just straight, flat, consistent, constant flowing energy. Like when you're barefoot on the ground, you're getting that constant energy going up. You're actually releasing negative ions mm -hmm. and discharging um, any static electricity that's built up on the body. Now with, uh, with the man-made electricity, which is alternating current, that's not found in nature anywhere. And and so what that is, is it's alternating current. So instead of going like one direction and, and not, and, and no pulsing, no constant and, and constant, it's going alternating up and down and forward. So there's three directions to it. 
and it's it's pulsating at 60 hertz and 60 hertz uh, actually interacts with our bodies because a lot of our brain waves go from from about 10 hertz all the way up to 60 hertz the schumann resonance of the earth is about uh 7.87 to up to 30 hertz and it it varies throughout the day and the night and that kind of helps our body set its circadian rhythm and, you know, along with the, the light cycles and the magnetic cycles of the earth and moon and sun. And, uh, and so there's all these natural things that are occurring, but the unnatural thing is these pulsations. And, you know, I like to give the example of thinking about the way that the human body responds to electricity. Like, like when you get like, Think of an extreme, like you get shocked by an electrical outlet. Like electricians know that if you grab something, like you have this muscle contraction that happens and it's hard to let go if if it's on, it's like it sticks to you and your muscles are contracting. Or like when you restart a heart, you pump voltage into the heart, it contracts the heart and that's how you get a heart to restart. So there's this contraction that happens with this pulsation and uh, it's it can be involuntary. So our bodies are very you know, very much responding to these pulsating currents of, of electricity in a way that's, that's not natural. And, and that actually, because when you contract a muscle, you use up calcium and magnesium is supposed to relax the muscle. So if you constantly have this contraction and, and relaxation that's happening because of pulsing, then you're losing calcium and you're losing magnesium. And, you know, a lot of, you know, I've often thought that, well, man, maybe the reason why like over 80% of the world population is deficient in magnesium is because we don't really have that much in our diet and we're losing a lot of it because of all this EMF pulsation that's happening, that's making us lose it on a cellular level. So that, I've that's wondered. all kind of, you've heard about that? I, I have, I, I've, yeah, I, well, and just even um, the imbalances, you know, like to your point that we're taking all the right supplements and, you know, we're sleeping, we're moving, we're eating and something's still off. What are we missing? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's partially the, this mineral balancing thing and, you know, magnesium affects sodium and there's all kinds of other interactions that happen with, with uh, any, any one mineral depletion isn't doesn't mean that you're just going to be imbalanced in one mineral all the minerals are connected in various ways in the body and so it can start to really cause some major dysregulation when any any one environmental stressor is depleting even one mineral or one vitamin or whatever it is mm -hmm. so you know there's some other side things that happen like you you know typically people who are exposed to a lot of emf have lower melatonin production Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that has to do with the oxidative stress that's created from the voltage hitting the cell membrane and creating this molecule called peroxynitrite. Um, and, and that's an inflammatory molecule that just caused, you know, it's, it's found at high levels for people that have multiple chemical sensitivity, uh, chronic fatigue, autoimmune disorders. Uh, they all have all of these these chronic conditions that people are dealing with often have a component of high peroxynitrite levels in certain parts of the body. And, you know, the melatonin actually helps to diffuse that whole situation by dampening that inflammatory response via the, I think it's the IL-6 uh, pathway. And so um, there's there's just all of these intricate things that can happen just because of one type of exposure or multiple types of exposure and emf is is one of those things where there's like all different kinds of emf that you have to have to consider and really there's no one solution that fixes all the types of emf because emf includes visible light all the way down to you know wireless frequencies from your phone and then also the electricity in your walls and each one of those things has a different solution you can't do the same thing to protect yourself turning off your wi-fi doesn't fix your light environment right. uh, fixing your light environment doesn't doesn't uh fix the electricity that's coming on to you and buzzing your your cells uh from the wiring behind the walls 
The, so, the one other thing I wanted to add, I've heard that um, it's like a perfect storm that EMF kind of exacerbates mold growth and parasites and all these other problems. When you have EMF in the mix, it just compounds it. Metals in your mouth react. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's, you know, especially the metals. I mean, your whole body is conductive and resonates with, with these frequencies in different ways. And it de kind of depends on the size of your organs too, because uh, the, all of these frequencies have different lengths of the waves. So like there's some waves that are like the size of your head and that's going to resonate a lot with your head and actually go pretty much all the way into the center of your brain. Um, so there's a certain frequency that'll resonate with the myelin sheath of your brain, certain ones that'll resonate more with the liver and the pancreas or the gallbladder or the spleen. Um, and it, it can go down and, and uh, even to the cellular level, like uh um, your skin actually provides a pretty good protection for a lot of those higher frequencies that are smaller wavelengths and resonate more with smaller tissues and organs. But, um, but in general, the human body is about, you know, anywhere between, between four and seven feet tall. And so the, the frequencies that resonate most with that are really in kind of smack dab in the middle of the FM radio. And so a lot of people don't realize that yeah, cell phone frequencies can resonate pretty well with the body up to about three gigahertz. But um, the radio is the, the radio stations that you get from your FM radio, like when you're changing stations in your car, those resonate the most. And if you're really close to any of those towers, then you could have some really major things going on in your house because a lot of things in your house are about the same size as your body. Like if you have a metal chair, or a wall, like eight feet tall walls with metal beams in it. There's, there's all kinds of things that can resonate with those frequencies. And it creates, when it resonates, it creates a field that comes out from it a certain distance. And so the most practical example would be like, if you remember those old uh, bunny rabbits on the television set, mm. and like when you would go to kind of get yeah. close with your hand to them yeah, uh, and touch them, the reception starts to get better. Yes. That's because your body is picking up that signal and resonating that frequency out a certain distance. So as you get close to the antenna, it's showing you that, hey, your body is acting like an antenna. And when you start to touch that, that uh, antenna that's on the TV, you be you're becoming part of that antenna and, and helping the reception to be better. My, my grandparents used to take aluminum and kind of like attach it. like Yeah. That. Yeah. So you can put aluminum on there. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I question, and I don't really recommend a lot of the shielded clothing that's out there is because it's like putting aluminum on the antenna. You're an antenna yeah. already. And then you're surrounding yourself with metal and it is blocking like some of the frequencies, but there's, there's these uh, other resonant frequencies that are collecting that energy and retransmitting the the uh, the objects frequency back into the body at even sometimes even stronger than the original signal. And so it's, you know, when you wear, if you wear shielded clothing, it should really be, you know, I, I like it better for like when you're traveling at an airport in an airplane, because the freak, you know, that the frequencies they're using are higher frequencies. Like on an airplane, they're using 2.4 gigahertz. That's a little bit higher frequency. It's not going to resonate as much with the shielded clothing. But when you're when you're out and about, like at your house or in town, you're going to have all kinds of, you know, hundreds or thousands of different frequencies that are resonating onto that clothing and then retransmitting very, very close to your body and penetrating into your tissues and organs. So it's that's why some people feel better with it and others feel terrible with it at the same time. And, and the only difference is, yeah, they're wearing the same clothes but they're in a different environment. Some people might be in an environment where they have more higher frequencies that are exposed to and other people that might feel bad wearing it uh, may have lower frequencies that are actually resonating and creating a more of a problem. No, that's wonderful. And thank you for kind of clarifying the difference between natural and unnatural energy. There was one question. I, I know that um, when you came to our house, there was like some natural energy. Like sometimes if there are streams that are flowing in a certain way, sometimes natural energy, if your house is out of alignment, can be problematic. Can you right. talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So, the, you know, this kind of goes back to, you know, what our ancestors discovered 
You know, they didn't have any of the man-made frequencies around that were that were causing problems. And so they were much more sensitive to natural elevated frequencies that that uh, in fields that could impact uh you know their own bodies and also the bodies of of livestock and pets and things like that so there's some areas of the earth where the magnetic field is stronger and in more uh what i would say noxious fields where like there's there's more metal in the ground and it's compressing where there's water that's pushing through different types of metal creating a battery like effect and and uh, coming up from the earth. And those, those intense areas um, are very problematic, um, especially at nighttime, because they get charged by the sun during the day and then they give off, um, they give off different types of radiation depending on what the material is from the ground during the night. And your body at night is meant to kind of be, um, it's, it's meant, nighttime and sleep is meant to be a repair mode uh, is meant to be a repair mode for the human body. And so it's like you're checking into all of your body's frequencies without any interference from outside frequencies. Right. And so if you think about it, like what happens at night, the sun goes down. So you don't have any of the even natural light frequencies that your body is being stimulated by. Mm -hmm. And also our ancestors, they would go into perhaps a cave or a stone structure or a mud hut and they would actually be the the natural resonances of the earth would be dampened in that environment. And so that's even less of stimulation from the outside world, even the natural energies. And so any natural energy that you in, in excess that you're getting coming up from the earth uh, is also problematic. So you want to be in kind of a low energy um, space while you're sleeping and so that your body can tune into, okay, guess what? My something in my brain is putting out a pain signal or, or some kind of frequency because our bodies actually communicate via these electrical signals. And, uh, and, and when there's interference, it's harder to know what's going on for your body to know what's going on in the body. Cause there could be a false signal coming from any man-made source or even a natural source. Like if there's a lightning storm going on, uh, and there's a lot of documentation historically about people getting sick during thunderstorms as well. What about like where the bed is and if there's some kind of underwater stream that's kind of in that area and how that throws you off? Yeah, so you can measure you can measure um, with, you know, the, the classical way to measure according to environmental medicine in Europe is to measure it with these copper dowsing rods. And basically, it's more scientific than it is woo. Um, because mm-hmm. you're, you're standing there with these two electrodes, basically these copper rods and your body is conductive. And when you enter into a field, the polarization changes and, and the copper rods tend to attract toward one another when you have a, a, a more intense field that's, that you're exposed to walking over. And so, um, you can, you can detect underground water currents that are, that are going. That's what, that's what a lot of, uh, these people do to find wells and oil as they'll yeah. hire a lot of the big oil companies will actually hire somebody with you. That's really good with the copper rods to go and find out where to drill the hole for, for oil or, or for water. And, and they'll, they'll get it. They pay them hundreds of thousands of dollars just because they know right where to point to, to dig the, the well. So um, you can find water and that's what a lot of our team members do besides all of the man-made stuff that we're testing for with all of our, equipment and everything we're testing for these uh stress zones especially on the bed where you're sleeping but also where you're spending a lot of time during the day and then uh mapping it out and we can either move the bed or uh we have a diy solution that we kind of guide people through to to make these these copper rings that actually create a deflection field and uh and essentially create a bubble around around the bed um, by, you know, you just, you just have two pieces of copper in a figure eight. And as that energy comes up, it resonates on those, that copper figure eight, uh, structure that you've built. And then it re-resonates back that same frequency to the ground. And then you can test it with the rods and it doesn't, doesn't uh, come together anymore in that area. So I love this. So, so what I've heard so far is that 
Um, energies can throw off our healing. Uh, not There's not a one size fits all solution. It's not like everyone should wear the shielding clothing, but you do have a system for helping to educate people about what's going on so they can home assess and do some things themselves and then have resources to hire out. Can you talk about your, your course and how that's structured a little bit? Yeah, sure. So the course is called the Electro Pollution Fix Course. And I partnered up with Nick Pinot, uh, the EMF guy, to offer that course. And Nick is very well versed on EMF research, and he interviews a lot of uh, EMF scientists. And then uh, the, the side that I bring into it is all the practical solutions. So me and my team were on the ground, you know, doing 30 to 40 EMF uh, testings at people's homes and businesses per month. And uh, so doing 30 to 40 per month, we're really in tune with the products that are out there. We're testing saunas all the time. We're testing light panels. We're testing all these kinds of biohacking equipment. And uh, so we know, and, and lighting. So we know what the good products are and what the ones that can be improved are and Oftentimes we'll work with these companies to improve products, whether it's something that uses therapeutically or just a, a household item. Um, but the course actually walks you through all the things that you can do on your own uh, before we even get there, which actually makes makes our testing in in a person's house go a lot better. And then you and then uh, you can it goes a lot faster. And then and then you can uh, really zero in on, okay, here's the ultimate solution for your house because you've already taken care of all the stuff internally. That's the problem. But the, the issue that we have run into the last few years is that we've kind of come to a point in human history where everybody who cares about health and wellness needs to do something to shield their bedroom at, at night. And, and that's because we just have increasing amounts of wireless. It's not getting better. It's getting worse all the time. There's more and more frequencies and it's coming, bombarding us from the outside. So really, no matter what you do on the inside, there's always going to be this, these outside sources that are bombarding you and, and you have to do something about that. So the course is really about, you know, and there's a, about like maybe 60% of what you have to do for EMF mitigation is inside the home. And so it's taking that big chunk and giving you a head start on all of that. And it's, it, it makes it so we can really zero in when we come in with our, you know, we have about $20,000 worth of equipment that we're bringing into people's homes to test this. And that's, most people can't afford to just buy the equipment and learn it all themselves and, and do that. So that's the service that we provide and then come up with a plan for them to, uh, through, through Shielded Healing to uh, basically mitigate, especially the bedroom, but also do as much as we can throughout the house that makes sense. And every home is different. We'll find wiring errors, things mm -hmm. that electricians have done in the past that are creating a magnetic field over like a whole half of the house or sometimes the whole house. I remember you found that in mine, like my, my um, circuitry in my bedroom wasn't grounded and I had to bring in a new electrician to totally fix it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's like, it's very common actually, probably one out of three homes we have to get an electrician involved to, to fix something minor and then maybe one one or two out of ten uh there's something major that we need to really work with them on on fixing and electricians um we're, we're lucky because we have enough knowledge that we're able to show in the national electric code which which thing is wrong in you know because the national electric code if they if electricians follow that to a t then you're not going to have many issues for magnetic fields in the house but the caveat to that is that you're always going to have electric fields just because of the materials that they use. They're using this plastic Romex that's not shielded and uh, from, from voltage leaking out. So the voltage basically covers the whole entire room and you're surrounding yourself with these pulsating frequencies in 99.9% .9 of homes in the United States. Uh, the only exception is if you live in some condo in like a high rise in Chicago or New York or possibly LA or Dallas or someplace like that. And uh, they use metal conduit to, to hold the wires in. And then that conduit's grounded. And so there's not any electric fields leaking out of that. So basically what we recommend to do is either use a canopy around the bed that can be grounded 
to block those electric fields from coming onto your body. Or we have a, a system of, of shielding paint that, that we recommend that's grounded. And that blocks all that electricity from coming onto your body and stimulating you all night long while you're sleeping. Amazing. So how do people find out about this course, which sounds like a great kind of gateway to learning more and working with you? Yeah. So you can find it at electropollutionfix.com. Okay. And we'll have a coupon code for your listeners for $100 off the course. The course retails for $297. So it would be $197 with your coupon. And, um, and yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the course. It goes module by module. There's homework and you can kind of get your family involved in, in a lot of the things. One of the things we do is have you take a slow motion video of all the lights in your house to see if your lights are flickering because oh, what's that? No, that's interesting. That's an yeah. easy low hanging fruit way to figure out the problem. Yeah. So, you know, what, what we found is that uh, a lot of the issues that people have that are electrosensitive even, or people that are just trying to optimize their health, like, like a lot of, a lot of people are really aware of blue light, that it's bad at night, but not many people are under, have been understanding that flicker is, is a huge issue as well. And I really kind of helped bring that to the forefront about four years ago when I started measuring with this German made meter here. And uh, it measures flicker. And so like you can, you can hear like that's the 60 Hertz from the light above me. And this, this is another light source over here and another one that so you can kind of hear, like, here's my phone. Oh, wow. So that's, that's the sound of the flickering happening and they convert it to an audio signal so you can, so you can actually hear it. But um, this, that's a neurological stressor. You kind of think about strobe lights and people with, uh, you know, epilepsy, it, ca it can cause an epileptic seizure. Um, but a lot of us have these lights all around our house. We're wondering why we're getting headaches when we go to the office or we're at home in this certain area. And, uh, if you can just do the slow motion video on the lights that, you know, that's, that'll kind of give you a clue as to like, if they're flickering, cause you'll be able to visually see it flickering in slow motion. So that's, that's an example of like one of the homeworks where you can kind of really get your family involved, which is important because um, getting the family on board with everything you're doing, there's going to have to be a few changes that need to be made. And we really want people to have success. And that's a huge thing is like, if you have a skeptic in the house, we have a whole module, whole, whole talk on, how to get skeptics on board. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then just each module is about a different type of EMF, what to do if you're in an apartment, if you're not in a permanent situation, what to do if you're building a house, that sort of thing. And uh, we just kind of go through everything and it's really, it's a self-paced thing. And, and uh, we've had really stellar reviews so far. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing your brilliance and everyone can learn more. We will have all the links below and thank you for the generous discount. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Jody. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this podcast empowered you with some useful information and takeaways. If you liked this episode, please consider sharing a positive review or subscribing. I would also love to offer you my free parasympathetic toolkit as a gift just for listening. It will teach you how to activate the most important nerve in your body to turn on your ability to heal. This free toolkit includes a checklist, a video, and a detailed guide. If this podcast prompted any questions, you can always find answers at my blog at vibrantblueoils.com or my book, Essential Oils to Boost the Brain and Heal the Body. Until next time, wishing you vibrant health.